I'm, I may be speaking from my own experience, there's a little bit of a Presbyterianness that somehow entered, I think, North American actor. I, I, see, I see joy and panache in French acting, some British acting, maybe not German acting, but in North American and Canadian acting, there's a bit of Presbyterianness in it. How do we not do that? <laughs> yes, well, of course, there's a, that's what broke through in the 30s when the group theater in New York hit the scene. And as uh, Jason Robards, my old friend, used to call them that whole group, you know, Marlon and De Niro and Pacino and the... <laughs> he used to call me Italian street acting. He, he sort of said, oh, well, let's do a little bit of Italian street acting now. Um, it, it was a real div divide, and I remember in the early days on Broadway when, when you went to rehearsal in the early 50s with people like Catherine Cornell and people I, which I was in plays, two plays with. I mean, you went to rehearsal in a shirt and tie and a, and a coat. Uh, it was a very polite thing to do, and everybody was Mr. The stage manager called you Mr. Plumber, no matter how large or small a part you played. There was a courtesy about the theater in those days that <laughs> along came. So if you'd go for, go for a drink down in the bar, you'd mix with the Italian street actors, as we call them. <laughs> all the method boys who are come to rehearsals in t-shirts and torn jeans. It was a wonderful mix in those days because it's just happened. It just started to happen. And we all hated each other. We'd always beat the shit out of those. And they'd say, let's beat the shit out of those limey puffs <laughs> that are wearing those yeah, the shirts and ties. Yeah, and they're speaking properly. Who the fuck wants to speak properly for Christ's sake? They love language too. Hey, what are you doing? Talk to me. Come yeah, on, talk to me. What are you doing right. now? They have a love of the language. Of course, they, in, their in language. A, yeah. in, in a different way, yes. but it is still a love of the language. Oh, yeah, they have a, a relish, and it's wonderful. And you wanted to, and I suddenly thought, what, how great to be able to do both. And if you could mix the two of them together and use what the method boys are using and the technique, tec technique of the British, what a wonderful mix that would be. And did you? Have you Yes, tried? I tried very hard to do that. And talk all like that on the plot and do all this kind of no, stuff. No. Hey, how you yeah, doing? Chris, baby, how you going? Eh? That's right. You could do that. <laughs> and then translate it into good speech. If it was a, if it was a classic that uh, deserved the, the attention of good speech. It's a different kind of articulateness, though. When you talk about the British tradition coming through, there's a power in their articulacy of image. They're in the street language, which is also powerful and colorful. There is a kind of articulateness, but they're different. In a well, way. It's not much, there's not much image because they create it with the physicality. The, they, their physical way of acting creates the image that the words in Shakespeare, for instance, or uh, do it for you. You don't have to act them out. You better just say them because they are so vivid. You can't do both, on, one on top of the other. And that's what so many modern uh, productions of Shakespeare today, a lot of the kids think that you have to act out each thing. If you, just let the, if you just let the speech do it for you, you don't have to move a muscle. You just obey the rhythm of the speech, make it as real as you can in contemporary terms, obey the rhythm, and uh, it creates the whole world for you. you